everyone. I'd like to call the meeting of the Illinois Liquor Control Commission meeting to order. The time is now 1.06. It's December 25th. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, this is Chair Bird presiding. Uh, Secretary Chairs, would you please call a roll? Commissioner Stan Cooper? Here. Commissioner Gibbons? Here. Commissioner LaMalfa? She's present in the room. Commissioner O'Connell? Commissioner Powell? Here. Commissioner Polito Sanchez and Chair Bird. Here. Thank you, Dean. Item number two, approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion for the approval of minutes of the board meeting held on November 17, 2021? So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Powell, second by Commissioner Stan Cooper. <coughs> it's been properly moved and seconded. Dean, would you please call a roll? Commissioner Stan Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Gibbons? Yes. Commissioner Powell? Yes. Commissioner Bird? Yes. Motion carries. Item number three, receive executive director of our report. Hi, good afternoon. Good, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to leave my mask on today just because we have a, an increased raise in the number of um, COVID cases. So just to keep everyone safe, I'm going to keep masks. If someone can't hear me, let me know. Um, first, let me thank you, Chairman Berg, and all the other board members who are present. Um, for today's meeting, as well as the ILCC staff, industry stakeholders, stakeholders and guests. Um, like I said last month, over the past several months, I have met and I will continue to meet with stakeholders, legislators, and other special interest groups to ensure that ILCC continues to meet the industry's needs. If there are any interested organizations that would like to meet with me and have not had an opportunity to do so, please don't hesitate to reach out to get that scheduled. Um, moving on to operations. Um, for fiscal, audit is still wrapping up and we once again anticipate that it's gonna be completed this month. Um, we have and will continue to timely provide responses to the last few remaining responses. Um, we are actively preparing for the upcoming budget hearings, which are scheduled to begin in, in January at the earliest. Um, from an HR standpoint, today is Jason Youngberg, our IT manager's last day with the IOCC. Um, we do wish Jason well and the best of luck in his future endeavors. Um, with that being said, both the IT and the HR teams will be short staffed for the next few months. Um, however, we will continue to work diligently to minimize their impact, um, their um, open positions may cause the agency. Um, the Chief of Internal Affairs job description has been, it's still pending approval by CMS. We have no new updates at this time. Um, regarding our open admin service manager position, um, the job description was approved. We are in the posting stage of that, and we do anticipate getting that posted shortly. Um, unfortunately, due to an um, unexpected opening in HR, that's causing a little bit of a um, delay with some of those, some of the HR functions. Um, the eight pending liquor control inspector applications, they have been graded by CMS. So we are entering the interview phase of the hiring process, and we will be scheduling those interviews once all the graded applications have been reviewed. Um, we, have, we did receive over 400 applications, so it's just a lot to go through. Um, regarding the underage compliant assistance, as always, we still need more candidates. Um, we will, we do continue our efforts to recruit more young people. If anyone knows anyone, please direct them to our website because we are continuously accepting those applications. Um, licensing is fully staffed for the first time in several years, so that's great news um, because the license renewal extensions is ending at the end of the year. Um, we are continuing to encourage our licensees to renew as soon as possible, although I would say ideally, by the 27th of the month to prevent administrative delays. Um, and let me just note that the agency and the office will be closed on Friday, December 24th, as well as Friday, December 31st. So even though the license extensions extend on the, expire on the 31st, 
nothing is going to get processed that day because the office is going to be closed. So to prevent any sort of administrative backlog sooner rather than later is encouraged and would be appreciated. Um, we do continue to be open to the public full time, although we do encourage all licensees to apply and renew online because one, it allows for safe, uh, faster processing and it keeps things safe, um, especially since we, we are still dealing with COVID. Um, however, our licensing assistants are available to assist our walk-ins and we do understand that the process can be a little bit cumbersome. So if anyone does need that, that extra attention, we are here and available to help. We are still averaging approximately 100 walk-ins a month. And since we opened to the public in August, we have assisted more than 500 walk-ins. As far as legislation goes, we are continuing to work with the governor's office regarding our proposals um, for possible advancement during spring session. Um, administrative rules, we did finalize the proposed rule for coupons and rebates, and they have been shared with the stakeholders for their review. It was filed with JCAR in early December, um, which allowed stakeholders time to communicate directly with us regarding the proposal. We have received comments and feedback from over five industry stakeholders, which we greatly appreciate. At this time, since the rule has been filed, no ex parte communication can take place about the filed rule. Any further comments need to occur during the public comment portion of the rulemaking process. A copy of this proposed rule can be found on our website. Um, we continue to receive a fair number of legal technical assistance um, inquiries on a daily basis, and we do continue to encourage the licensees and stakeholders to continue to utilize this resource. As far as enforcement goes, um, we have the eight inspectors, which we'll be um, interviewing soon. Enforcement, again, does continue to be understaffed. However, we will continue to work towards having a fully staffed enforcement team so we can better meet the needs of the industry while protecting the health and safety of the people of the state of Illinois. We're gonna be publishing our fourth quarter newsletter soon. We anticipate that being published by the end of this month. It's gonna go out via email and it'll also be available on our website. Um, currently, we are working on being able to send a copy of the newsletter to our Bassett certification holders. Um, this was a great idea, which was given at the last commission meeting by one of our Bassett presenters. As always, we do continue to encourage questions, feedback, and comments, um, and we definitely will utilize them whenever we can. So we do appreciate and, and again, continue to um, request those. And finally, next year, you will begin hearing presentations from health and safety organizations. We want to ensure that you are receiving a well-rounded presentation of presenters so that you can continue to expand your knowledge base. But, and that concludes my executive director's report. Thank you very much. Does any board member have any questions or comments with Director Gardner? I have a comment for me. Uh, the enforcement part of your presentation. Uh, obviously, we don't have as many tests or uh, underage drinking as we'd like to have. That's correct. On the lack of employees. But the percentage of uh, failures in the tests that we have done is alarmingly high. Agreed. Being over 50%. Agreed. So we need to get out there and somehow do it. I mean, I, I know that in the past we do some of the municipalities to help us until we get up to staff. I don't want to like, reignite some of those relationships. Or, I'm not yeah. sure we need to get out. I, I completely agree with you, Commissioner. Um, we have reached out both to CPD as well as the Illinois State Police to see if we can use some of their young people. And we have been doing that whenever we could. Um, and let me just say that one of our proposed legislation pieces is for, I apologize, is for um, um, funds for evidence, which would include paying the underage compliance um, minors. Because um, currently we have to go through a CMS hiring process, which is a long process. It is a bit truncated, but it's still a kind of a, a semi lengthy process. If we had funds available, um, we would be able to call people and if they're available, we can just pay them out of this fund without having to go through the whole hiring process. Of course, they would still have to pass the background check, 
but it would greatly expedite the process. So that is one of the things we are trying to move forward with for the spring session. Moving on, I think that's uh, item number four. Is there anything else? Thank you. Thank you. That's all the comments we got. Um, Enforcement Division from Las Peterson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, to, to expound just a little bit on what the director just mentioned, would uh, we're going to refer to that as a confidential source, that person, that underage compliance person. And she said it'll drastically reduce, I think it'll really, re you know, it'll reduce the time we'll be able to move these things forward really, really quickly. Uh, so we're hopeful and worked on that and it should be, I'm, I'm believing in the spring that'll be happening. Uh, so that's an excellent way for us to enhance this program. The, uh, for November, you'll see that we did 782 inspections, had 240 violations, <coughs> excuse me, 57 warnings were issued during that time. Uh, we also received 58 complaints. Uh, most common, common complaints were sale to minor, uh, no valid license and happy hour violations. <coughs> Staying with the uh, underage compliance details, we see that we did uh, a detail um, with Forest Park Police, and Tom, you're absolutely correct. 13 establishments were checked, two prior violators were retested, eight failed. So it's, it is, that's a, an alarming number. That could also be contributed to things got a little bit lax during COVID. Uh, we're not out as we you know, probably should be, but we're working toward getting that happening. The second one was in Worth, and it was a similar finding. 12 establishments were checked, um, and seven failed. Uh, the good news is, is the word is getting out on the street. We're out, we're back, we're in the game again, and we are checking uh, in worth. It'll show up on next month's report. Uh, the following day, we did another, or a couple days later, we did another one. Everybody passed. Well, the word's on the street. Everyone knows liquor control enforcement division is out there now. And so I, I think we're getting to a point now where we're gonna get a strong handle on this. Uh, there's a couple of notable investigations, <clears throat> but you can just take a look at those. Uh, there's been a lot of activity. It's been an extremely busy month. Um, and as the director said, we have the eight new employees, uh, new agents positions that are available that will be uh, hopefully starting uh, the interview process the first of the year, which will tremendously help us fulfill our mission. If there's any questions, we'd be happy to answer. All right, anybody have a comment or question? Um, they start acknowledging all the issues that are handling and being handled as well. We appreciate it. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to industry education from Michelle Flagg. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, so uh, some of the highlights for the report, um, as the director mentioned, the fourth quarter newsletter will uh, go out at the um, end of this month, uh, at the latest at the uh, first weekend, uh, January. Um, and then we continue to send in, uh, emails to licensees that have not renewed their uh, licenses yet. So that's, um, and we've changed, we kind of changed each email so that it's not repetitive and, and hopefully that the email is not ignored to get those last minute uh, licenses uh, renewed. That, and these are the licenses that uh, did not renew uh, due to the extension for uh, COVID. Um, the industry speakers for 2021, um, uh, well, beginning in 2022, that will change a, that will change slightly where we'll focus on health and uh, health and safety types of organizations and so these are your substance use uh, prevention organizations as well as the underage my glasses are fogging, fogging up <laughs> because of the math um, and the underage prevention organizations 
So some of the organizations that we've received confirmation from are AIM, and each month we kind of uh, organize it by whatever the prevention month may be. So uh, December is driving impaired prevention month. So in December we'll have AIM, which is um, Alliance Against Impaired uh, Motorists. And uh, Lurie Children's Hospital is another one, the DEA, as well as Prevention First. So those are some of the organizations that we've already um, received confirmation for, for 2022. And then also going into 2022, uh, some more educational campaigns as it relates to uh, what licenses need to know, uh, invoices, contaminated liquor, liquor purchase at retail. So those are uh, videos that will be generated uh, in the, uh, and also help with uh, the facet licensees as far as identifying overserved customers and uh, those types of topics. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Michelle. Any comments or questions? I'm, just, I'm looking forward to the presentation, Michelle. Thank you so much. Um, um, I was going to ask you one other question, but it escaped me. Sorry. About, about, about organizations? Yeah. Come on, Chris is great. All right, next up, leave a report by Noel Kwanda. <laughs> Good afternoon, commissioners. Good afternoon. Uh, so, as the director mentioned, uh, we did um, file our proposed coupon uh, rule um, and statement. Um, we did not, or the, the Secretary of State acknowledged receipt of that on uh, December 10th, so I imagine it will be posted uh, to the Illinois Register uh, soon. Um, we worked this month on uh, a couple um, initiatives proposed by the Department of Revenue and the Department of Insurance, both having to do with linking um, <clears throat> our um, process with theirs. In the case of the uh, Department of Insurance, it was to uh, suspend or revoke or otherwise inactivate a license um, of a retailer to not carry active workers' compensation and insurance. And with the Department of Revenue, it was, uh, it's a similar matter where um, they would like us to do something like that with uh, retailers whose certificate of tax registration has been revoked. Uh, and we are continuing to uh, work with them on that uh, proposed legislation. Uh, we had <clears throat> 91 cases uh, pending with the legal division uh, last month. Um, that was up slightly from October. Uh, 19 of those are distributor cases, 47 are retailer cases, 20 are SAM cases that are all a result of uh, those latest um, under, upper, undercover activity. Uh, or SAM um, investigations in Forest Park and wherever the other place was. Um, and we are going to be setting up uh, training conferences for those uh, violations uh, at the end of January. Uh, we currently have 55 cases um, where we have outstanding requests for pre-disciplinary conferences. Um, and during the month of November, we conducted uh, 13 PDCs. Um, as I mentioned, sale of alcohol to minor cases, um, th those went up from 7 to 20 because of the, as a result of those investigations in the suburbs. Uh, we currently have 31 appeals pending. Um, we are waiting on a couple transcripts uh, for cases that already have been heard to get those uh, to the commission for your deliberation and uh, we hope to have those soon. Uh, we responded to uh, 15 FOIA requests uh, during November. Uh, the vast majority of those seem to deal with um, auto insurance for some reason and we drafted um, 
10 advisory opinion responses last month. Uh, in other litigation, uh, Full Pool Wines versus Berg, we were served on that. We have requested uh, representation by the Attorney General's office and they have responded uh, that they will be representing us. And I'll have them take your questions if you have any. Thank you, Bill. Any comments or questions from the board? All right, we're all set. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. I do have some mail here for commissioners. Oh, I'm just going to leave that up here by All you. right, thank you. All right, licensing. Snapped up, Marta. It's my turn. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chair, Commissioners, and those in attendance today. Um, as Director Gardner mentioned, we are approaching a very important deadline. Liquor license, like liquor license renewal extensions are expiring on 12-31 of 2021. Um, I wanted to share some numbers with you to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at, what we have left. Um, in the retail tier, currently, we have 5,172 licensees that have not renewed. Of that 5,172, 37% have not renewed for two years or for at least two years. So we have some licensees that are going to have to renew for two periods, their 2021 period and 2022 period. And as Michelle Flagg mentioned from our industry education department, our focus for the next renewal reminder that's gonna go out is going to provide some clarification and some additional instructions on making sure that if you are going to renew, that you check and make sure you renew. If you're behind two years, that information is available. It will show the renew link for both of those years. You have to renew for both years. So that's very important. Um, I also wanted to share another figure with you, and that is what it, you know, how many retail licenses did we have pre-pandemic? Pre 23,667. Currently, 20,714, 12% decrease. We thought that number was gonna be a lot higher. So, just wanted to provide that information. With some business closings, we clo some businesses that closed, we had some new businesses open. Our biggest drop was in the special event and special use permit license category, which we anticipated. So we had 50% less licenses issued in the special event and special use permit category. That was that was the category that we saw the biggest decrease. This past, in November, we had, we renewed, we processed 77% renewals. That was the highest percentage we've had all year. Prior in October, we had 60, 66%. So we are seeing them come in. Historically, the last two weeks of each month is when we see the highest volumes come in. So we anticipate next week and the last week in December to be very busy. Um, I inform staff, months ago, that that last week in December, we, we, will all meet, we will all be here. And I, I wanted to thank Director Gardner and our HR division for providing the resources. This is the first time in the staffing so quickly because we really needed to get these new team members on board prior to this deadline. And I cannot tell you what a difference it's made. Currently, before I walked into this meeting, I think we had 12 renewals in the queue that we had to process compared to 200. So we're getting, we're getting these reviewed and processed very quickly. So I'm very happy to report that. Um, also wanted to mention that in between all of this, we're still getting feedback from, from licensees, from industry members on you know, how we can improve on some things. And one, there's a report we publish every day on our website. It is a new, and renewed license report. And that report reflects all licenses that we issued the prior day. So anything, any license, any new license, any renewal we processed yesterday is gonna show up on our website, is published on our website. And one of the concerns was, 
it was hard to differentiate between which is a new license and which was a renewal. And the way you can tell was by the number series, but that was very confusing. So what we did is we went to IT and we asked if they can code it as new or renewed. They've added an additional column and beginning tomorrow, this new report is going to be published. So that I think will definitely help with some of the FOIA requests we get. And I think a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of agencies that use that information. And I think this would be helpful. They'll be able to tell which is a new account and which one is a renewal. So I'm happy to report that as well. And that is all I had for today. Thank you, Dushanka. And Thank the whole you. team for working so very hard on that no. while you look work that's been coming towards you. Thank you. And I, and I can't, I appreciate you know, it. we are so excited. We're, we're fully staffed currently. And um, let's keep things, you know, hopefully <clears throat> we can stay that way. Don't drink I know, I'm afraid. <laughs> there's still employee turnover. It's everywhere. That's true. Well, Thank you very much. Don't want that. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item number five, receipts, state of industry report. Please welcome Wine and Spirits Distributors of Illinois, Jeremy's, Jeremy Krugney. Katina. Yeah, I'll bring this out. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, two cheers. Sorry about that. All right, Madam Chair, members of the Commission, thanks so much for having us today, giving us the opportunity to speak about the state of the industry. Um, as stated, we are the Wine and Spirits Distributors of Illinois. We're a trade association that's been around for um, more than 75 years now. We started off as the Illinois Wholesale Liquor, Liquor Dealers Association and uh, transitioned to the Wine and Spirits Distributors of Illinois um, about 25 years ago. Just a little bit of background about us. For We have a lot of new staff and everything. Um, we have about 60 distributor members that are members of WSD, and they range in size from uh, one employee to multi-state corporations with thousands of employees. Um, we have about 3,500 employees in the state uh, with about 2,100 of those represented by collective bargaining unit. The two largest distributors in the state are Southern Glaciers and Breakthrough Beverage, which are both really big companies, but we also have a lot of, a lot of other uh, interesting companies that are members of WSD as well. And one new development uh, that happened earlier this summer is that a large multi-state um, distributor, Republic National Distributing Company, acquired one of uh, the, the other local distributors, heritage wine sellers out of, out of Niles. And so they, they moved into the market as well. We also have some, some interesting members. Um, we have, you know, some, some that have presence in multiple states like Winebow and Maverick that specialize in, in certain kinds of wine. We have Midway Wholesale, which is a cash and carry model run by the Rand family here in Chicago. They've been around for a long time. And then we have a lot of distributors that specialize in, in um, you know, specialty products, ethnic products from Eastern Europe, um, products from Central America, tequila specialists, uh, Japanese companies that, that sell to the, the uh, Japanese restaurants in town. So there, there's an opportunity. A lot of these companies are, have been founded in the last 20 years that the um, the barriers to entry are, are pretty low to start your own distributor. You get a good product and you get it out there, to, especially to the on-premise market, and then you sort of try to work into the off-premise market. Commissioner Gibbons' old stores, um, old store down on the, on the southwest side, you know, that's sort of the, the model that's always been in the industry. So that's just a little bit about who we are. We also have um, distributors that mainly focus in beer that have a large wine and spirits presence as well. So especially downstate, some of the, the major brands that you would know are, are affiliated with some of those other distributors. Um, and our, our mission as WSD is to promote the general welfare of the alcohol industry and, and maintain and encourage high standard of ethics and responsibility. And so that's what we try to do as our association. Um, I'm going to let my colleague Katina Yoakum introduced herself 
because um, you've, you've all heard from me before. But just a little bit of background about myself. I've been uh, with WSD since 2015. Um, I became the general counsel in, in 2019, and then I took over running the association about two years ago. Um, I, I spent a bunch of years in state government prior to that, and um, I'm active in the Wine and Spirits Wholesalers of America, which is our federal association. I sit on the advisory council there. Uh, I work on the uh, legal strategy task force and some other councils. And then I'm a trustee for our um, Liquor and Allied Workers Union Local 3, their pension and health healthcare fund. So I, I work in that way as well. Um, I'll let Katina uh, talk about herself, but also from from our association perspective, Jim Webster, who's sitting behind me, represents Southern Glacier, so he helps us with regulatory matters. And then Earl Farkas, who's not here today, represents Breakthrough Beverage. And so we all work collaboratively working on wine and spirits issues. And then I'll, I'll turn it over to Katina, who's a, been a long time employee with Lizzie and, and uh, the roles shifting. Good. If you guys can hear, I don't know. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Good afternoon, my name is Katina Yocum. I've been with Wine and Spirit for 21 years. My position is member service and community engagement. My duties are updating new and renewal licenses that are provided by the ILCC, daily removals and the delinquency <clears throat> list, I, um, revocations and vacate orders, cross references and bankruptcy. I also do uh, relationship building Building with uh, attending local meetings at the city council, the IO, uh, sorry, the city council and license and consumer protection. I meet with aldermen. I go out and volunteer with in different wards um, and just building relationships with the distributors. Okay. Yeah, and Katina's been with us, as she said, for over two Katina. decades, and um, we're sort of transitioning. One of the things we want to talk about is the the delinquency list transition as that uh, is implemented in a few weeks. Um, she's been handling that for us for for two decades now. And so um, her duties will, will shift some, but she's gonna still be assisting our distributors in, in that transition for some period of time. So we're working through that. And we wanna make sure we get that right. That's a, a really important thing that, that changes at the request of the retailers um, through the legislation in the spring and, um, you know, we're amenable to that. We just want to make sure that everybody can do business. As, as you know, we cannot extend credit beyond 30 days, and the law is complicated in that year. It's not really complicated. We can't do it beyond 30 days. But it, it is with, with 30,000 licensees, it becomes complicated on a weekly basis, and Katina has the unenviable task of keeping track of all that. We have a pretty sophisticated software system that we built over the years that she handles, and so she's going to continue that as we, as we transition. Just quickly on the um, economic impact, we, we uh, as an industry, wine and spirits, we have about uh, estimated 263 million in salaries and wages for all those employees, and we collected 294 million in state excise tax for the state. Um, so just a few of our priorities going into 2022. We wanna make sure that the on-premise industry is is completely back on track uh it, it, they had a pretty pretty good second half of the year i don't want to speak for my friend pat or anybody else in the room but i, I think things are trending in the right direction we're obviously worried about the winter with uh, the uptick in cases and just generally reluctance of people to be inside um but we're hoping that things continue to trend in the right direction there and just a few things that you know uh as distributors we did during the pandemic, you know, supporting the industry in a number of ways and we'll continue to do so, you know, whether it was, you know, buying thousands of meals from restaurants for first responders, hospitals and other organizations, um, delivering hand sanitizer. Many of our suppliers started making hand sanitizer out of, out of um, you know, distilled spirits and, and then, you know, waiving delivery fees and split case fees, which we did for a number of months, um, restructuring our labor force uh, with our partners in labor because, you know, the, the sales force that called on the on-premise had no work for several months. And so we had to completely restructure the labor force. Um, the on-premise market is, is pretty healthy with the exception, 
I would say the notable exception of the convention business. We really need that to come back to get people in the hotel rooms, in in the their seats in the restaurants, and and to get things going again, especially downtown. You know, you look around and outside, and it's still just it's not the same as we used to have, and we we really need to get that back. Um, another thing we try to do as a trade association, you know, educate and protect the free tier system. Obviously, we think it's a it's a tried and true system that's worked quite well to keep us safe and collect tax uh, taxes. So just constantly educating that. And then community involvement. Katina is, a, as far as WSDI staff, is our main um, you know, point of contact for community organizations. But our, our companies themselves do a lot, of, a lot in the community, and that's very important to us. Some of the, the challenges for us, as I mentioned, the, the delinquency list transition, if there's a disruption there, it's going to cost a lot of uh, a business, both at the retail and the distributor level. So we want to make sure we get that right. And then defending uh, the 21st Amendment. Um, Noel mentioned this new lawsuit that was filed. You know, uh, the previous one lasted five years and was eventually uh, dismissed voluntarily. And um, WSD was an intervening defendant in that and, uh, lawsuit. We anticipate we'll do the same on this this one. Um, as far as, you know, implementing the huge piece of legislation that passed in the spring, we have a few pieces to that. We mentioned the delinquency list, but also the cooperative purchasing agreements and quantity uh, discount portion of that. We've been working with um, the independent retailers extensively to try to get the, the, the surety bond component correct. And we just want to work as, as good partners to grow the independent market. That's the intent of that. And um, we're excited about that opportunity to, to work through that with them. Um, and then, you know, just generally, we're going to need some time to adjust to this these major changes in the marketplace. That's that's all uh, we ask for. Everybody's going to make mistakes, um, whether it be the regulator or the members of, of business uh, business community. And we're just we're all working through it together. We have good communication with. The director and, and Noel and and Rick and the team and um, so hopefully we can get it all figured out. Um, you know that was, piece of legislation was a couple hundred pages and so there's a lot of ins and outs that we'll be working through. Um, and then you know interaction with liquor control on enforcement. You know we get a lot of complaints and you know we, we try to uh, judiciously get those in if, if it's as appropriate. And then looking at the next session, um, just the ongoing quest uh, for additional loopholes in the act when we want to make that that deregulate the industry. We're, we're opposed to most of those. We think uh, a well-regulated market is, is extremely important and we'll continue to support that. And then lastly, I just wanted to touch on the, the coupon uh, proposal that was uh, posted last month right before the meeting. I think there were um, some very positive aspects to it, but also some missed opportunities. I want to touch on those. Um, we want to make sure that these programs, uh, the money flows appropriately. And any program where the money flows from the manufacturer directly to consumer. So if you think about any rebate where the money, you know, it, it's not old, the old fashioned way where you just, you know, you get a little rebate in the, in the newspaper and you mail it in and you might get a check back for $5 later. They're really sophisticated now. And, and you'll see these text to redeem programs where it looks like a little uh, a coupon. But, you know, Chair Berg, you might just text a five digit number and then $2 will come back to your Venmo account or your PayPal account when you purchase the product. And so that, that, that program works quite nicely because neither the distributor nor the retailer is ever touching the money. It's just a, a true rebate from the manufacturer. And those programs are clean and they have no real problems with, um, with some of the issues that are seen with these uh, scan programs or instant redeemable coupons where the retailers are, um, are paid by the manufacturer or the distributor to run the programs. So we have uh, we've seen a lot of issues, especially uh, with the equitable di distribution of those programs. They're, they're aimed at certain retailers, um, and they they are not put out in the market. And you know, th there's been an attempt at compliance. 
And I think there should be a robust discussion on, on how that works. You know, these programs are often aimed at two to three large retail chains. And then what they'll do is um, they'll post some coupons on something called coupons.com. And then, you know, they'll say, well, any, any consumer could go to coupons.com and find that coupon and use it. That's, in practicality, that's not true. There's only so many coupons that are going to be put in the market, and, and the vast majority of them are going to a narrow band of, of retailers. We want to make sure that those programs are distributed equitably among, among all the retailers. So that's, that's one major concern that we have. And then just generally, um, you know, there's, there's market disruptions when some of these, these steep discount programs in, come in. There was one last year where um, the practical price of the bottle of wine went down to $1 with a coupon. And I, we just don't think that's good for the market. It's, it's not a responsible way to, to operate. And so we, um, we want to make sure that these, these, uh, these programs are vetted properly. And I think we need to, to step back and, and look at them uh, more closely. Um, I think that's, that's the main thing. You know, the, the coupon programs have sort of been the Wild West for about six or seven years now, as long as I've been involved in the, in the uh, industry. And so we want to make sure we get that right um, as it moves through the process. I don't want to take up too much of your time. That's really all I had um, in terms of specifics. But we're happy to answer any questions about anything I've talked about or anything else that we uh, can help with. Talk to us a little bit about some of the work you do uh, in, in the community engagement uh, space. So um, up until the past two years, I've been out to ward meetings and um, listened to the complaints that they may have about some of the troubled business stores with um, liquor stores. They not be problem solved. Um, there may be a chaos at the store. So I went in, sat with the alderman, and the alderman and I may meet with the owner to try to resolve the issue to make it back to a safe store. I've done um, volunteer for uh, the 16th district um, for the Batter Women uh, program that they had. And that was mainly to help them get back to self sufficient. Uh, football Classic, we did CPS, we volunteered CPS uh, for the uh, elite basketball. And what we did for that, uh, we take out uh, underage material for non-drinking. Um, the, the industry provided uh, pencils, um, which they uh, don't drink, and um, rulers that had six points of not to drink alcohol at an underage, and being underage. Mainly just wherever um, an event is or a meeting, I go and attend. Just to build up relationships with them. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Jeremy, I would just like to say thank you for all your help on the delinquency with us and Katina. It's very important for us. Uh, it was a, a giant bill, as we all know, and uh, it's been a struggle to get it you know, transitioned and it hit us at a time that was very difficult with several other issues that we have. So we really appreciate that. I know everyone at the commission does, for sure. Um, also, um, can I just put one comment? Oh, yeah, sure. I do, and I apologize for speaking out of turn. Um, I did neglect to mention the delinquency list in my, my report. Um, we are set to go live with it in two weeks. However, there is a working version that is live on our website right now. Over the next two weeks, we will be working out the kinks. However, people can go and start submitting on it. I do caution you to still follow your current process, which is, of course, reporting it to WISB. But if you want to, as a secondary, report it to us, you can do that as well. But this is just for the next two weeks. After January 1st, then you're going to have to report it to us primarily. And if you, WISB wants to continue maintaining their list, they are currently, you know, able to do so. Thank you. Yes. And Thank also, we are going to have a demonstration for Wednesday just to kind of go through it. If anyone, anybody else wants to say for that, you're also welcome to do so as well. Definitely. All right. This afternoon? It'll be right after the meeting. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the uh, pine will take under consideration as well. Thank you. Right, moving on. <clears throat>
item number six. Are there any members of the public who wish to address the board at this time? It would appear that uh, there are none. And we'll move on to comments from the board. Does any board member care to comment? Mr. Paul, go ahead. No, it's <laughs> I can go on for about a half an hour. <laughs> well, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to our staff and all their families. We appreciate all the hard work that has gone into everything that you have done this year. Moving over here was tremendous. Um, I know Rick was shorthanded for flying solo for months on end. Flying, you know, the uh, attrition of Jet Pam has top was departing us and Bill coming on board and. It was much appreciated by all of us that you guys, that you, guys, that you all worked so very hard. It was a challenging year with everything that's been coming at us. The work has not stopped. It has only gotten exponentially busier. The past two weeks, four, two weeks coming forward are busier than anybody's ever been while everyone else is off. So we appreciate your, all of your hard work. Thank you. And uh, moving on to item number eight. So I moved. <laughs> Do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? It's been moved by Powell, seconded by Gibbons. Secretary Jurist, could you please call the roll? Commissioner Span Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gibbons. Yes. Commissioner Powell. Yes. And Chair Burke. Yes. Motion carries. Both we are adjourned. Our next meeting is Wednesday, January 19th. Here's Daily Plaza, Suite 209. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy See you holidays. next year.